Advanced carburetor tuning really is not that difficult, but it does take the right tools to get the job done. And I'm going to show you a new one that I just added to my toolbox. Let's take a look at it. Something I've always wanted to add to the toolbox, but just really never had uh, the time, money. They're very expensive. Uh, but the good thing about these is the prices come down significantly and the features of them are through the roof. So I'm going to show you this one that I got today from Reed Instruments. And when I say this one, this is a thermal imaging camera. Now, why would I need a thermal imaging camera for carburetor tuning? And really, that's the easy part of it. The nice thing about having a thermal imaging camera out other than a standard type of pinpoint type heat gun is it gives you a really broad picture of what's going on. It's not just a really narrow uh, focus like on a, a pinpoint uh, heat gun or temp gun that'll tell you what the exact temperature is in a certain location what a thermal imaging camera does is give you a much larger picture and sometimes that's hard to understand until you actually see one of these in, in function so i'm going to show you the little details about this one uh but talk a little bit about uh, the reason why i wanted to go with this over just a standard uh temp gun so why is a thermal imaging camera much better over something very simple like this uh, heat gun and really it boils down to one thing is this gives you a broader picture of what's going on. This is just a really easy pinpoint way of looking at something. But when you look on this little space heater, you can see that we can get a good, nice reading in a certain spot on it. But depending on where you point the gun is the only area that it's going to give you the information from. And sometimes that just doesn't help you understand what's going on in the bigger picture. And that's really what carburetor tuning is uh, all about, is understanding what is actually happening within the engine. And in this case, understanding what's happening in the exhaust. If you've got a dead cylinder, uh, a dead hole that's just not firing, um, maybe lash is set too tight, hanging the valve open, spark plugs are bad, ignition wire is bad, whatever the case may be, understanding that and understanding why the carburetor is doing what it's doing is a huge, huge deal. Now, these are very inexpensive, and like I say, they do a decent job, but once you take a look at how the thermal imaging camera picks up that information and shows it to you, you it's really night and day. The really cool thing about this one, too, is it automatically updates and calibrates itself. So when you look at the space heater in this uh, uh, video here, this image here, uh, it shows you that it is a, you know, uh, the whole thing looks hot, but as it calibrates and starts to narrow down where the actual heat source is coming from, it will show you those areas are much cooler than what it is center where that actual heating element's coming from. And again, that type of information is just invaluable. And that's why I've always wanted one of these uh, thermal imaging cameras because it really helps you get a much better picture of what's going on. So I'm just gonna show you a few little details here of what's going on with this camera. Um, very, very interesting how it, how it works. Like I said, it, it automatically calibrates itself. So as you are looking at uh, images, it will either track areas, uh, it will give you a max temperature range that it's hit during, um, uh, you know, its scan. It'll give you a scale over here to kind of show you where it falls into. The interesting thing about this is we can set a pinpointer for the center so it'll tell us exactly what it is on that pinpoint. In this case, uh, my diet mount dues about 33 degrees just came out of the refrigerator just a few minutes ago. Uh, it's starting to warm up. But you see as it starts to calibrate, it's going to start shifting this around uh, depending on what the background. See how the background is a lot lighter? It's much warmer than, uh, than the can is. So if you put something really warm next to it, like my hand, it'll start to throw that off. Because now if you look at the max up there, it shows you that it's... Uh, picked up 83 degrees while the can is still registering uh it's starting to warm up a little bit but uh yeah just very very cool how it does that how it automatically calibrates itself um and starts to pull through different situations but the other cool thing is because this has a trigger on it uh, and it does have a camera you've got the infrared camera there and that's an actual camera uh led lights up here the nice thing about that if we want to take an image of this can 
snap it. It will tell you that it's got an image. It saves it. And then you can relook at it. And those go into save, saved images on an SD card in there. Very, very cool how that works out. Um, I wish that this had video. It does not have video capture. But <laughs> we're talking about a camera that's probably, you know, two or three times the amount that this one is um, if you want to capture video. But having images is really a cool thing. So it's, again, when you talk about big picture type of things, you can even see the heat signature left behind from where my hand was at. I'll take a picture of that. But yeah, just very, very cool to see, you know, what, uh, what that picks up in, in certain areas. And some things you just don't expect to have a, a, a very big heat signature actually do. Like I say, the garage here, uh, it's fairly cool here uh, in the Mid-South, um, but the walls are about 60 degrees. Bench top is a little bit warmer than that. I've had some stuff up here, but uh, you could tell that uh, the heat signature is still there from my hand being down, transferring the heat into it. Very, very cool. Very sensitive. Um, this thing's got a lot of settings in here. If you go down to uh, the set side of things, uh, you can look at the palette for what you want. So if you want it more in the, the rainbow type color, white hot. So if you want to look at areas, like here's the handprint there. It'll show you that in a white, black being, being hot, lava, um, rainbow if you want to pull it in that type of uh, configuration to see all the... I actually kind of like the rainbow one because what it does is it kind of shows you those areas. See how it, uh, the heat is dissipated over that, uh, that area. I'll snap a picture of that and throw that one up on the screen too. But yeah, very, very cool. Um, so yeah, the settings on that are on the palette is kind of a cool deal. I've just really left it on the iron hot, uh, just cause it's, uh, uh, really broad and, or it really shows you the, um, you know, the, the depth and the difference between, uh, surface areas. Can't believe my handprint is still there, but, um, let's take a look at some other things. There's a pin temperature pinpointer. So if you want it, like we have it pinpointed in the center, um, and then the image mode will, uh, uh, give you some details there. Settings, uh, just all things. So date and time, temperature, a little alert for high, low, auto battery off. Um, it's a USB powered uh, and charged. Uh, how you want to auto save system settings. Just really a, a cool deal. Now, let's talk about this for just a second because this is a very, very important part to understanding how a thermal camera works. Now, thermal imaging cameras are kind of interesting because it's going to read what it's going to read, but sometimes the surface area of something will lie to it. If it's really shiny, like this can is, it could reflect back off the infrared signature off of it, and it doesn't tell you exactly what the true story of what's going on on that piece of equipment, uh, exhaust manifold, whatever it is you're trying to measure temperature on, it can lie to you if you don't adjust this setting. So this is called emissivity. I'm sure I prob probably pronounce that <laughs> incorrectly, but that's okay. Uh, you can look it up uh, to get a correct uh, pronunciation of it. But like I say, it tells you how, how well an object radiates heat. So stuff that's really dull, uh, like concrete, for example, is at an 095 uh, skin, uh, which is... Uh, uh, has a really dull actual finish to it, uh, is rated at an 098. Um, stuff that's really like the ceramic coated headers on the uh, uh, GMC, that doesn't have a very good rating on it because it's very reflective and it doesn't uh, take that uh, trigger or that laser that's going on there to read all that information. It doesn't take it correctly. But what you can do here is you can change this to what you need it to be. So let's go ahead and set it at 98. And then now when you scan with the tool, it will give you, go back out of it, it will base it on that rating. So it will give you a truer indication of what the actual temperature is 
on what you're looking at. In this case, it's human skin. So this instrument comes with a really nice book and what you really need to do is hang on to it uh, because it gives you a nice chart that you're going to reference back to fairly frequently because it'll give you the textures uh, of things or material types and what that emissivity is of uh, rating is. So uh, that rating goes from uh, 0 0.01 up to 0 0.99. That's the range it falls into. So all of these numbers over here uh, fall into that range somewhere. Anything that's around 95 and up uh, will have a good, uh, you'll get a good reading on the gun uh, to tell you what the actual temperature is of what you're looking at. This little instruction manual is also just very, very handy. It tells you all the settings. Um, it's also in Spanish, I believe, as well, too. Um, but just tell you all the settings, how to get there, uh, how to adjust things, uh, how to format the SD card, yada, yada, yada. But it's very, I can tell you, I've already been into this a number of times. Uh, it's very, very small. Uh, it'll fit in the, the carrying pouch pretty easily. Uh, it's fairly small. I got the tape measure out here. Uh, you're looking at about uh, three inches wide and overall about uh, nine inches and uh, about three inches. So pretty small. Um, you know, there's other units on the market that are huge that have a much bigger uh, screen on it, but they're, you know, also five and six thousand dollars for them. Uh, this one was very, very um, uh, well priced. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below so you can go take a look at it from the Reed website. It is an affiliate link, so if you click on it uh, and you purchase this, uh, you know, they'll give me a small commission for it. But anyway, um, I, I think you'll find that the, the price is pretty reasonable. Uh, and it's got other uses too. I mean, you can use it in, in your home around electrical outlets and look at refrigerators and outside with the uh, HV, you know, air conditioning, you know, units and, you know, uh, and other HVAC type stuff. Very, very cool tool to have, uh, <laughs> in your, uh, arsenal, but, uh, a lot of little features in here. Um, you know, just, I, I would love to spend hours showing them to you, but, uh, you know, the, the images that uh, you see on the screen here are just things that I took pictures of. And uh, I think, uh, you know, just having that also when you snap a picture, uh, it takes your thermal image picture and then it references and shows you a picture unfiltered through the regular camera of what you were looking at, uh, which I find hugely beneficial. Every time you snap that, it takes the two images, one of the screen uh, of what's going on temperature wise, and then like say one of what you were looking at. So very, very cool deal. Absolutely stoked to have this one. Uh, the folks at Reed were very, very, uh, you know, gave up, gave me a lot of information on this thing uh, before I picked it up. Really, really nice thing. So let's talk about some pros and cons of this because there are a couple on both sides. The pros here is this is a very high quality camera. Um, I was kind of blown away by it uh, as I've been playing with it here for a couple weeks to see, you know, what it was actually uh, going to give to me. It's very, very well made. Um, it's got a IP65 rating, so you can splash a little bit of water. You can use it probably out in the rain without it hurting anything, but uh, you'll need to dry it off pretty quickly. It's a great tool for verifying and confirming, you know, the full temperature picture of something and understand where you're having problems or how a system is working that's a huge pro being able to adjust the uh, emissivity is on is pretty huge um, the setup's really easy to navigate the screens are easy to go through buttons are very simple i i didn't even read the instruction manual of course i just turned it on started playing with it everything that i need to find i could find uh, just by going stepping through it so if you look here and you push that button you can go to all your saved images We'll just select that rainbow one that we took. If you hit the set button again, it'll tell you that there's information. You hit it, it will tell you all the information, date, time, uh, what your uh, rating was for the emissivity, uh, where, how it was measured in Fahrenheit, and then it'll give you all the dimensions and the resolution of the shot. Really, really beneficial. You don't have to remember anything, write anything down. Snapping that picture gathers a lot of data for you and holds it in the, uh, in the SD card for you to access later. So very, very cool piece about that. Um, you know, like I say, any of these images that I've taken, it will capture all that information. So 
just a very, very, you know, thoughtful, you know, well thought out piece of equipment to have all that information. I guess there's also an LED light on there if you're interested in that as well. So I can see where that's beneficial, especially in a, a nighttime situation. But yeah, just uh, overall pretty stoked with with that. Like I say, the, the, the list of pros are pretty long. The list of cons are there, but it's also pretty short. Um, you know, the cost. It's, it's a very expensive uh, piece of equipment, even for a DIY user. Um, you know, you've got to really justify if you need it. Now, I can tell you based on all the carburetor tuning that I do that's on vehicle, uh, this is going to save me a ton of time. You know, the image only thing is kind of a con, I think, no video. But again, if you want to go out and spend three times the amount uh, on this thing, you could get a really good video type of camera to go along with it. But really, uh, I just don't need it in my case. Uh, having, a, um, having the ability to, um, you know, capture an image of something is just as important um, just as critical just as good for me I, I don't really need to worry about that too much so it's just there's so many little details in it that I could probably come up come up with with different cons of it uh, but really those are the two big ones cost and and image but uh, again if that's the biggest thing to complain about I got a lot of uh um, you know, I got a lot to be thankful for. But like I say, it's just a, a nice, rugged, good piece of equipment. Uh, one other little detail here is it did have a, a thing to mount on a tripod, which I obviously did in one of those videos. Very, very nice to have that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. So check out the link down below. Um, you know, if you're interested in one of these, like I said, it's going to be a bit of an investment. But uh, uh, trust me, in the short period of time I've had this for a couple of weeks and the things I've already played with it, uh, and knowing what I have coming up here on the tuning side of things, this isn't the last video you're going to see this uh, piece of equipment in here. Once we get into uh, a little bit more of on-vehicle tuning, we're going to use this to verify uh, what the uh, uh, output is on the exhaust side. It's a nice way of looking at it so you get a full picture of what's going on and you can quickly identify any of those cylinders that are having an issue. So anyway, if you've got any questions on this one, don't hesitate. Leave them down below. Uh, again, check out that affiliate link uh, to the Reed website and see this camera. Uh, they've got others in that series as well, too. But I think this is their newest, latest, and greatest. So uh, check it out. And uh, yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. They also have a YouTube channel. Uh, I will link that down in the description as well, too. Go give them a follow and uh, check out some of their other uh, product videos. They've got a lot of really cool stuff over there. So anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, we'll we will catch you guys on the next one, and uh, we will be using that camera again here really quickly. We'll see you guys later.